market failure and positive externalities. Market failure is when the free market fails to provide a product at the socially efficient level, or the level that society would like. And this presentation focuses on positive externalities. Those are positive side effects that are enjoyed by society when a product is consumed or produced. That word externality means that the positive is coming externally to the initial transaction. So if I produce a, or consume a product, society gets an additional benefit. So it's a positive externality. Merit goods are goods and services that have positive externalities that are underproduced or underconsumed in a free market. So an example is education or healthcare. Those goods and services have positives to society besides the people who are directly getting the education and healthcare, and they would exist without government intervention. They would exist in the free market, but they would not exist at a level that society is happy with. That's slightly different than public goods. Public goods are goods and services that have positive externalities that would not be produced at all in a free market. So the example of that is a road. A road would never be built by any individual because for a road to be effective, it would have to travel over a long distance and connect many different people and institutions. And all those other people, other than the person who built it, would get to utilize the road. It's called a free rider dilemma. They would not pay for the road, but they'd get to use it. And so the sucker who built the road would never be a sucker. He would realize ahead of time that I'm not going to build a road for everyone else to use. Everyone should chip in. So public goods only exist because the government interferes and builds them, usually through tax dollars. Merit goods exist, and we're going to talk about those more now. Um, what market failure regarding merit goods looks like and how we can correct that market failure. Before we go any further, we need to look at a socially efficient level diagram. CQ star represents an ideal, a social, uh, social ideal, socially efficient level, a quantity that society would like to have of any given product because of the positives or negatives that that product produces. And unfortunately, when market failure occurs, um, Q star represents a goal and in the case of positive externalities, we usually aren't getting Q star. We're getting less than Q star. We're getting less of the product with positive side effects. How do we know where Q star is? It's where marginal social cost and marginal social benefit meets. Marginal social benefit means the benefit that society gets every time a product is consumed. And marginal social cost means what society pays to produce each product. So let's focus first on positive externalities of consumption. This is when society enjoys a positive side effect when a product is consumed. So positive externality of consumption, good side effects that come from the use of a product. One example is immunization. Immunized citizens cannot pass disease on to other citizens. What do I mean? For a healthy young individual, 25 year old individual feels like, ah, if I get sick, I'll just tough it out. I'll be good. In a, I'll be healthy in a few days. I'm not going to get, let's say, the flu vaccine every year. What that individual doesn't consider is that if they do get the flu, sure, they probably will sleep it off. They'll be sick for a few days and then they'll get back to work. But in the meantime, they can spread that flu to other people who may not have a strong immune system and those people could get sick and suffer complications. So society would want that person to get an immunization even more than the individual does because society is concerned with the you know contagious effect of that person. Hybrid cars are another example. Individuals don't always want hybrid cars. Maybe they just don't like the appearance or they just want a bigger car that um, can do more, can fit more people, can uh, carry more things. Um, but the reality is when hybrid cars are used, the atmosphere is polluted less. So society would love more hybrid cars, but it doesn't get that. So when we do market failure, we want to diagram the problem. We want to illustrate the problem. And the reason that positive externalities of consumption occur is because the personal benefit is less than society's benefit. How do we show that? We draw an MPB curve, marginal personal benefit, to the left of MSB, the social benefit. That's what society would like to see because that's how much society benefits from the product. But the personal benefit, that's the reality. So Q represents the reality. It represents the equilibrium quantity, how much of the product we actually get. Well, Q star is that socially efficient level. It's how much of the product society would like to see. When that happens, we also can draw a wedge. It kind of points to the original equilibrium where MSC and MSB meet. 
and that wedge is our potential welfare gain. It represents quantitatively how much society could benefit if we found a way to close the gap between personal benefit and societal benefit. So when we remedy market failure, specifically when we remedy um, the failure to have positive externalities of consumption, we want to minimize that wedge because it means that some of that potential welfare gain will become realized welfare gain. Society could benefit if we close that wedge. How do we close the wedge? Well, the first option is to look at a subsidy. The government could give money to producers of the product that will lower the price. The products will become more appealing, and we're going to diagram that in a second. The problem with a subsidy is it's costly. When the government gives money to producers, there's an opportunity cost there. That money could go somewhere else. But how does that work? We look at our original market failure diagram, and subsidies shift supply to the right. So we're going to shift MSC to the right. We're going to label it MSC subsidy. And you can see that the new intersection created by MSC subsidy and MPB, again, we're looking at that intersection because MPB is the reality. That's the personal benefit. That's the, what drives people's decisions to get hybrid cars or to get immunizations. At any rate, that new intersection creates a quantity that is closer to Q star, closer to the socially efficient level than the original Q. So we're correcting the market failure. Furthermore, if we draw that Q line up, we see that the wedge got smaller. The green wedge is smaller than the blue wedge. So what that's saying is that the potential welfare gain is smaller. So that blue part, the remaining blue part that you see there, that is goes from potential welfare gain to actual welfare gain. Society is benefiting that much because of the subsidy, because we're getting that much more of the flu shot or that much more of the hybrid car. So the wedge getting smaller is a good thing. The potential welfare gain is getting smaller, meaning that the potential is turning into actual welfare gain. Another solution is for the government to directly provide the merit good. That will again lower the price to make the products more appealing the same way that a subsidy will, but the additional problem of direct provision is efficiency concerns. When the government makes a product, can they do so efficiently? That's a, always something that um, the free market minded people will bring up. That's why they might favor a subsidy. So I diagram it the same way as a subsidy. I show that when the government provides something, there's going to be more of it. I show that by shifting MSC to the right. And sure enough, you can see quantity moving closer to Q star. Again, it looks just like the subsidy diagram because direct provision of a product has the same effect as a subsidy to the producers of the product. And again, we have the smaller wedge showing that the potential welfare gain got smaller. Some of the original potential welfare gain became actual welfare gain. Third option is to advertise, which will encourage consumption. The problem with advertising is always that it's costly and it may not even work. To try to convince the habits of consumers is very challenging. But if it's successful, I diagram it this way. I draw marginal personal benefit, marginal social benefit, and in between the two, I shift marginal personal benefit to the right. Successful advertising will convince people that it is in their interest to consume a good. So successful advertising might convince you it's good to get a flu shot or it's good to own a hybrid car. And look at quantity. Once again, we're showing quantity is moving closer to Q star. We're getting closer to the socially efficient level. And the wedge is getting smaller, meaning that some of that potential welfare gain is being realized. And the blue part of the wedge shows how much we are benefiting through the successful advertising. The red part shows that there's still some more benefit that could be realized, maybe if, for example, we advertise better. We could always combine all of these issues too. Showing them all on a diagram at once would be very tricky, but you could do it. I'd recommend showing them separately. The final uh, solution that could be used in conjunction or separately is a law. Maybe a law will require people to get flu shots, or a law can require people to buy hybrid cars. But those examples are pretty far-fetched, and they show the problem with the law. How do you determine if a law is appropriate? And then you have to enforce a law. Good luck trying to get everyone to get a flu shot just because the government says you have to do it. Now let's turn on to positive externalities of production. Positive externality of production is when society enjoys a positive side effect coming from the production of the product. An example is solar power. When that product is produced, when I compare it to other production methods, it's much cleaner. It doesn't pollute the environment compared to fossil fuels. Uh, another 
positive externality is training. Some jobs need to provide their employees with training in order to fulfill their job. These employees may use said training outside of the job. This is a tricky one to explain, but uh, EMTs is the best example. In order for someone to be a successful EMT, they may need to get training. They probably come to the job with training, but maybe they need some specific training on a specific technique or a specific item. And so if all those employees as part of producing EMT or, or you know that kind of emergency health when an EMT is out and about not working their skills are still out there to benefit society even when the person is not on the job kind of a tough example but you can probably wrap your head around that one so once again we show a socially efficient level and the reason we have positive externalities of consumption is that the personal cost to the firms is less than the society uh, or more than society's cost so MPC is to the left of MSC what that's saying is that for the firm it's less appealing to produce products that require training or to use something to produce using solar energy and renewable energy sources because it's more costly and so you can see Q is less than Q star and furthermore there's a wedge there potential welfare gain society could benefit that much if they found a way to get firms to realize that it was good for society and maybe even beneficial to the firms themselves to produce the products that come with positive benefits as the products are produced so the first way to do that is again through a subsidy the government could produce more of the products that come with positive side effects again subsidies costly so it's important to note these problems with each of these solutions but how do I show a subsidy well a subsidy is going to make the personal cost to firms a little less it's going to shift MPC to the right showing that firms are now more willing to produce the products that come with positive side effects when they are produced and look at that wedge get smaller as I've explained many times that smaller wedge means that potential welfare gain now that blue part became actual or realized welfare gain society is benefiting that much the green wedge represents that there's still some more society could benefit another solution is direct provision of the product that has positive externalities of production but again direct provision is not only costly but we have concerns about efficiency can we trust the government to produce the product efficiently diagram it the same way as a subsidy start with our market failure diagram and then we shift MPC to the right to show that as the government produces the product there's going to be more of it we get closer to that social ideal as Q moves to Q1 which is closer to Q star and you see the wedge also getting again smaller the blue wedge to the green wedge showing that we are realizing some of that potential welfare gain and we could have a law to promote or require the production of the product and once again the problem with the law is is it reasonable to tell firms you can only produce energy using solar panel uh, solar power I think that's a little unrealistic governments will have to decide that and that can be uh, challenging so when we're correcting market failure it's important to consider the following Governments need to determine whether or not they should act and also how much they should act. Should they use subsidies? Should they use direct provision? Should they use advertising? Should they use a law? Um, then the government needs to realize that whatever action they take is going to have some costs and maybe other complications. Subsidies have costs. Direct provision is going to have that efficiency concern as well as costs. Advertising has costs plus uh, may or may not work and making a law can just be very challenging sometimes because what law is realistic what law might infringe on people's liberty and then so the government needs to weigh those costs against the potential benefits that the society would enjoy um, so maybe it's worth those costs if it leads to less pollution and so the last part about correcting market failure is if we don't correct the market failure it will continue to exist but eventually it might go away on its own eventually people might realize that hybrid cars and flu vaccinations are good for themselves as well as society but a lot of times when market failure comes up in the free market there's no way it's going to go away unless the government addresses it so the government needs to consider is it worth addressing how do we address it and how aggressively do we try to address the problem that wraps up market failure with a specific focus on positive externalities